I'm going to um, speak to you about economic growth, about why we're so rich. Once we were all very poor. It was not that there were some countries that were very rich like Holland or England and some that are poor like um, Russia or China. Everyone was poor. In 1800, the average person in R Russia earned the equivalent, the modern equivalent of about $2 a day. Now imagine getting along in, in Moscow or New York or Beijing on $2 a day. Now that's easy to imagine because there are still, there are still uh, uh, places down at that, that level of prosperity. But the good news is that from 1800, 1900, 2000, 2016, income per head in places like England or Russia or even China or India has increased enormously. The goods and services that the average Chinese person or the average English person has in the way of health care, housing, food, travel, entertainment, has, has, has increased by such big percentages that it's hard to, hard to understand. The, uh, in a place like, like England, which in 1800 had an average income of about $6 a day, now remember that it was $2 a day in Russia at the time, now has an in income of about $110 a day. Six to 110. That's an enormous improvement in human fulfillment, human life. In fact, you, you, you can draw a diagram. You can start back at uh, uh, the, the beginning of the human race in Africa, we're all Africans, and there's $3 a day or $2 a day, and so it goes for 200,000 years. <laughs> goes and goes and goes, goes up and down a bit, but it goes, goes, goes. Then about, about here we have the agricultural revolution, the invention of uh, the, the domestication of plants and animals, and it goes up, but then it goes down again. Because with agriculture you can support more people, so that drives down the average income. So it goes until around 1800. And then it goes, watch, like this, whoosh, goes up at this tremendous rate, completely unprecedented. It had never happened in human history. So the question is why? Why for the, in this one time in human history did we overcome most of scarcity? Now, of course, there are still poor people, even in the United States, even in, 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 in Russia. But even the poor people in the United States are much better off than, they, than their ancestors were. So it's a puzzle. In fact, it's the main puzzle in economics. In the, in the field of economic science, the biggest question is what the Adam Smith, and I cross myself, Adam Smith called the nature and causes of the wealth of nations the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. What were the causes? Well, the usual way of talking about the causes speaks of material causes. This is in a way the influence of Adam Smith, but it's also the influence of Marx. A, a materialist idea that foreign trade caused it or exploit exploitation of empires caused it, or um, capital accumulation, more buildings, more roads, more educated people, or resources caused it, oil, um, coal. And in a book that I wrote in 2010, I went through all these explanations, each one, 
I mean, it's a long book. It goes, you know, it's 500 pages long. So it goes through all of them, one after another. Is it foreign trade? Is it imperialism? The last stage of capitalism, as Lou Lennon called it. Is it, um, I don't know, is it, is it virtuous capital accumulation? Is it the Protestant ethic? Is it institutional change? And these are all the suggestions that economists and historians have made over the past, well, the past um, 200 years, while it's been happening, this And my conclusion in that book, which is called Bourgeois Dignity, is that it's not any of these materialist explanations. That there's something deeper. There's a change in the spirit of some countries that has allowed ordinary people to innovate, to think up new ways of making cars, making automobiles, new ways of growing potatoes, new ways of organizing universities, new ways of organizing science itself. That ordinary people had this opportunity for the first time was the big change. So in a word, the change in the 18th century, starting in Northwestern Europe, starting in Holland in the 1600s, then shifting to England and Scotland and the North American colonies in the, in the 1700s, and then to the wide world in the 19th and 20th century, in a word, in one word, liberalism. Liberalism against the hierarchy that had dominated agricultural societies since that agricultural revolution. It's the, it's the, um, the allowing people, as the English say, to have a go. In the older societies, and it's still in a great many societies, hierarchies, men, women, lords, serfs, rich, poor, are frozen in place. And you can't move, you can't have a go, you, you don't have a chance. So it's not, it's not the, that there was some rise of entrepreneurship psychologically, it's not that there were new opportunities for foreign trade, trade and commerce as existed since the beginning of Homo sapiens. It's, it's not those material things. It's a political and sociological change. Two items, equality before the law and equality of human honor, human dignity. Now that's not to say that we are in the United States or, or in Russia have perfect equality on either of these scores. There's a problem in Russia with the, with the rule of law. There's a problem in the United States with hierarchy and uh, um, snobbishness and, and for example, uh, race. And, but we're slowly overcoming those. We're moving towards a more liberal society in which more and more, more and more people can become entrepreneurial, can start a new institute, can start a new way of making furniture, can start this and that. So it's, it's not mechanical, this modern economic growth. It's evolutionary. As, as long as large numbers of people can try out things and are not stopped by, by the police or the law or the Lord. No, you can't do that. No, you're just a woman or you're black or you're a colonial person. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. As long as that doesn't happen, there's this tremendous enriching. Turns out that the great social discovery of the 19th century is not nationalism, which was a, is a disaster, or socialism, which has been another disaster. 
and if you like those two, National Socialism, but the, the, the solution, the, the, the discovery was that ordinary people are creative. <laughs>